from Sounds True, Dr. Quantum presents A User's Guide to Your Universe, Session 3, What Consciousness Does, with Fred Allen Wolf. Hi. We're now in the third session. This one deals with this whole question of the mind in the body. Actually, we're going to start off by looking at where we ended up last time. We ended up last time really looking at this whole business about does the mind create reality? Is there an out there out there? Well, what I didn't tell you, I need to tell you now because it really applies to how the mind acts in the body by looking at how the mind seems to be acting in the physical world that we see out there. Because what it really is telling us is the distinction which separates that stuff which is out there from what we think is in here ain't so firm and fixed as we would like it to be. And that maybe what we call the body may not be just what's confined to our visual sensorial experience of our body. Namely, I got my hands, I got my toes, I got my head. Maybe there's something more than just I got my body. Maybe there's something else going on. And maybe what this is telling us is something to do with not only is our body just what is seen by our eyes, but maybe our body really extends far beyond what we normally conceive of as even our body. And what this is getting to is something which really is the relationship between mind and body, or, if you will, what consciousness does, what it actually does. Now, let's try to paint the story by giving you some of the various colors we're going to use to paint the story. The first thing we have to understand, the first very basic thing, is that things are complementary. That just because you see things one way, that doesn't mean that's the way they really are. And that you can see them another way, and it would be very different from the way you first saw them. And it doesn't mean that the second way is the way they really are. But in a way, they can be even contradictory. It was Walt Whitman who said, Do I contradict myself? Well, very well then, I contradict myself. I am large. Uh, I contain multitudes. And each of you out there is large, containing multitudes. You're not just confined to your body. And in order to get that clear, let's tell you a little more about this story. It really began with Niels Bohr again, you know, the guy who discovered that electrons were making quantum jumps inside of atoms. He realized when he heard Heisenberg come up with his idea of the indeterminism principle, the uncertainty principle, and when he recognized what Max Born was saying about probability theory, that the waves are really not physical waves, but waves of possibility, he began to realize that there was some kind of principle in operation here, which he called the principle of complementarity, which said that when you look at things a certain way, that's what you see. Look at them another way, you see something different. And the thing he was most concerned about in his day was something called the wave and the particle, meaning when you look at things in a wavy way, it looks wavy. When you look at things in a particle way, it looks particulate. In other words, He was trying to answer the whole question that Einstein was worried about when that electron wave came to that dish and left itself, whether it would look wavy or become a particle. And he says the experiment was designed to bring out the particleness of it, and you could do it another way, and you might see the waviness of it. Well, it turned out that it wasn't quite that way, but it nevertheless gave people an inkling into the fact that you couldn't know everything at once. You couldn't grab onto the whole secret of what's going on at once. You had to allow for this principle, which was called the principle of complementarity. It's a difficult principle to to really understand because it's very, very paradoxical. But there is something that we all understand 
and our own human nature, which illustrates it probably better than I can try to explain to you in simple terms, in terms of particle experiments. But I will try. But first, let's start off with something you do understand. You know that you feel, and you also know that you think. And you probably have relationships with other people in your life, and you know that you can think about the situation that you're in with your relationship with that other person, say a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, and the other person may feel about the situation that you're in. And because feelings and thoughts really don't always correspond, we say they are complementary to each other. One complements the other. One feels a certain way about something, and then one can think about it, and the act of thinking about it can actually change the feeling, so that the feeling changes, sometimes in a way that you can't always predict. Let's say you're in a relationship, and your partner says, I feel that this is a good situation. I feel that this color of this dress on my body, it really makes me feel like a whole new person. And you, by the way, are looking at the dress on her, and you realize it makes her butt end look fatter. And what are you going to do? Are you going to tell her this, or what are you going to do? So you say, well, you know, you decide to finally bite the bullet. You say, you know, it makes your butt look fatter. And she goes, what, what? And she gets all excited and she starts yelling and her feelings completely change and now she's angry at you and da 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 One thought and the feelings completely change. That's a complementarity. In this case, it was kind of dramatic. They don't always have to be very dramatic, but they tend to be that way when you're talking about feelings and thoughts. Another thing has to do with maybe how we sense the world. We all have sensations of the world, and we also have intuitions of the world. We intuit that if we do things a certain way, then that's likely to occur. We have the intuition that it's likely to occur. Very often we're so busy intuiting that we don't notice that we've cut ourselves or we're tripped and fell, or we're not always in touch with our bodily sensations when we're intuiting, and vice versa. When we're really in touch with our bodily sensations, we don't notice the things that are coming around the corner, so to speak. So intuiting and sensation are complementary to each other. This is what Jung talked about when he talked about the functions of personality, that we all have complementarity between thinking and feeling and between sensing and intuiting. So now let's look at how we apply this principle to a physics experiment. This is a classic kind of experiment in which this wave-particle duality or principle of complementarity between wave and particle really first began to show up. Here's how it goes. you got to imagine this, so put on your imagination hats for a little while here. I want you to picture that you have in front of you a screen, like a movie screen, okay? And I want you to picture that you're going to be looking at that screen. Now, just off to the side of the screen and in front of the screen, there is another screen that's completely black, except for two very narrow slits in the screen. Very narrow slits, like Venetian blinds. But let's pretend they're running vertically down the wall rather than horizontally across. It doesn't matter. They can be horizontal, too. But let's make them go vertical, okay? And behind that screen, which has the two slits in it, there is a source of light, electrons, particles, whatever you want. Okay. Now we turn on the source, and here's what happens. We want to know where the particles go as they go from the source through the two slits onto the screen. Now, here's what we observe, okay? We observe that every time we turn a particle on, turn a source on, a particle flies through, goes through one of the slits, we think, and then lands on the screen. And we do another one, and then we get another dot on the screen, and then another dot on the screen. Can we imagine that little dots are flying up and appearing on the screen? Dot, 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 dot. Every time we're seeing where the particle lands, and we're seeing something 
rather interesting, appear on the screen. Now, what is it that we're observing appearing on the screen is something called a wave pattern. What we're seeing is...